Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be talking about the principle of conservation of momentum. So, before we start, let's talk about collisions in general. When collisions occur, there's a before stage and an after stage. So as you see on the left, the right hand side, we've got a red ball colliding, hitting the blue ball. And afterwards, they're separating. Uh, that is a collision, so there's a before stage and an after stage. There are two types of collisions. One of them is called an elastic collision, one of them is called an inelastic collision. So in the elastic collision, the momentum is conserved. What does it mean to have the momentum conserved? It means the momentum before should be equal to the momentum afterwards. So in the elastic and the inelastic, the momentum is conserved. So we'll put that down here. Conserved. Momentum is conserved in both. But what about the kinetic energy? So for the elastic collision, the kinetic energy is also conserved. So the total kinetic energy before equals the total kinetic energy afterwards. But in the inelastic collision, this is the difference. The kinetic energy is not conserved. So not conserved. Yeah, so just make get our heads around that. So elastic collision, momentum is conserved. Kinetic energy is also conserved. Inelastic collision, momentum is conserved, but the kinetic energy is not conserved. Easy stuff. Now, scrolling down, we can talk about the principle of conservation of momentum. So the principle of conservation of momentum states the following. The sum of the momentum before the collision will be equal to the sum of the momentum after the collision. So once again, the sum of the momentum before the collision equals to the sum of the momentum after the collision. We've got the following... Um, scenario here. We've got um, a blue block hitting a yellow block and afterwards they're colliding, sticking together and they're moving away. So the total momentum before should be equal to the total momentum afterwards. And the question is the following. How fast is that combined block moving? So how fast does this move? And I'm going to walk you through this problem. Yeah. So we start off writing the following statement. So we can start off writing. Oh, let's just scroll up a bit. Perfect. So we can do the sum of the momentum before should be equal to the sum of the momentum after. Those are my symbols. So look, that little arrow, that is P, that stands for momentum. And this symbol over here stands for the sum or the total. Yeah, the sum, all of it. Uh, and we know that the formula for momentum is also equal to mass multiplied by the velocity. From the previous lesson. Okay, so this, let's do the momentum of everything before. We've got the blue block, so it's the, the momentum of the blue block, yeah, plus the momentum of the yellow block. That should be equal to the momentum of them combined as they move away. Yeah, look at that symmetry in the left hand side and the right hand side here. Momentum of the blue block, so we can do that, it's going to be the mass, yes, times by the velocity, so I've got 4 times by 15. Momentum of the yellow block is going to be 2 times by 3, that's going to be the yellow block. That should be equal to the momentum of them combined, so now they've combined and moved off together. Ah, there's a problem here, I've made a mistake. The, men, the, the velocity of the yellow block is not free. Does anyone know why it's not free? Well, it's because of the direction. So the direction, it's moving in the opposite direction. So I have to times put a minus sign over here. So it's minus three over there. Yes, look at that diagram. It's minus three because it's going backwards. And bear in mind, we have to take that into account here. Momentum afterwards. So it's going to be six. It's the mass times by the velocity, which we're trying to work out, which we don't have. Yeah, we got that. So now I can do the algebra. So it's going to be... 4 times by 15 plus, uh, oh, sorry, minus 6 is going to be 54. Yeah, make sure you try that in the calculator. Yes, 4 times by 15, and then obviously you're going to subtract 6 from that amount, equals to 6v. And then you're going to solve for v, therefore v is equal to 54 divided by 6, which is equal to 9 meters per second. Easy stuff, yeah? Actually, it's not that easy. It's, it's quite hard, but you've just got to get the thinking right when you're, pro you're solving the problem at the start, and then you, you just solve right at the end. So V is equal to 9 meters per second. Easy. 
Right, now, scrolling down, let's look at another problem. What about this one now? So now we've got the following. A truck of mass 3,000 kilograms, it, moving with velocity of 10 meters per second, collides with a stationary car of mass 1,000 kilograms. The impact causes the car to move off with an initial velocity 15 meters per second. So it collides and the small car goes off flying. Assuming that the momentum is conserved during the collision, determine the velocity of the truck immediately after the collision. So work out the velocity of the truck after the collision. So how are we going to do that? Fine. So we're trying to find out the velocity of the truck. So you always start off writing down the sum of the momentum before equals to the sum of the momentum after. Yep. Right, so momentum. So that means the momentum of the truck before plus momentum of the car before should be equal to the momentum of the truck afterwards plus momentum of the car afterwards. Happy days? Right, so momentum of the truck, first of all, it's going to be, let's do it, so it's 10 times by 3,000 because that was the velocity was 10, the mass is 3,000 plus, plus the momentum of the car is going to be a thousand times by zero because it wasn't moving at the start but equals momentum of the truck so keep that equal sign along that line over there momentum of the truck is going to be three thousand times by v plus momentum of the car afterwards it's going to be 15 times by a thousand there here we go so now we can solve it then so i'm just going to push up the screen up a little bit so we can see it a bit better uh, so we're going to go for over here, so 30,000 plus 0 equals to 3,000 V plus 15,000. 30,000 minus 15,000 equals to 3,000 V. Then, therefore, 15,000 equals to 3,000 V. Then solving for V. V is therefore equal to 15,000 divided by 3,000 equals 5 meters per second. And we're done. Yeah, it's a really tough question, guys, but obviously that's the higher end of the course here. So V is equal to 15,000 divided by 3,000 over here, and we get 5 meters per second. Uh, scrolling down for the summary. So here's the summary then. So... Collisions can either be elastic or inelastic. Yeah, in elastic collisions, all the kinetic energy and all the momentum is conserved. In an inelastic collision, only the momentum is conserved. The principle of conservation of momentum states the sum of the momentum before the collision is equal to the sum of the momentum after the collision. And that's it, guys. I'll see you next time for more cool physics. Goodbye.